Ladies and gentlemen, as we begin our program this morning, uh, nothing is nothing I think is more fitting for our organization than to have our Commissioner of Agriculture with us. Uh, Steve Troxler is no stranger to this group. He's no stranger to this building. Uh, he's no stranger to you. I don't know, I've had the opportunity to work with him since he's been uh, Commissioner of Agriculture, and I don't know of a, a harder working, more forward thinking, more progressive Commissioner of Agriculture anywhere in the country than we have here in North Carolina. He's doing a good job. He has done a good job. As a matter of fact, uh, Peter Daniel and I were with him last week out in California. We were looking at the California State Fair. Ladies and gentlemen, they've got a good state fair in California, but it's not as good as North Carolina. <laughs> it's not as good as North Carolina, I promise you that. I was there to witness. And when we have our state fair, uh, it's not 103 degrees. It's a dry heat but it's still 103 degrees in California last week. So without any further ado, it gives me a great deal of honor to present to you uh, with some comments, our Commissioner of Agriculture, Commissioner Steve Troxler. Commissioner. Larry, thank you. I always look forward to this day when so many people from across North Carolina that I know and love uh, are in one place and I don't have to be traveling uh, mile after mile after mile to see you. So this is a, a grand opportunity and, and I want to thank Larry and the North Carolina Farm Bureau for all the support that uh, they give the Department of Ag and uh, Agriculture and Agribusiness in this state and I don't know that there's ever been a time that we're all pulling together with the same goal in mind, and that's the success of the people that are out here on the farms and the people that are in agribusiness. And I think that uh, success shows, and uh, that's the way we get it done. I also want to uh, welcome President Duval, somebody that I've gotten to know over the past several months. Uh, in fact, he and I were able to go in and sit down with the president and the vice president and the secretary of agriculture. and have a very frank discussion with them about uh, future policy needs of agriculture, not only in North Carolina, but in the United States, and, and I think it made a difference. Uh, one of the things that we told him was that, uh, that told the president that we needed to get our beef back into China, and uh, just kind of a quip, he said, well, you know, uh, I've developed quite a good relationship with the, uh, the, the head man over there, and I believe I can make a phone call and, and, and help y'all with that. And what was it, two or three days later, the announcement came out that we were going to put beef back into China. So you never know how just one conversation is going to make a difference. And we certainly hope that uh, over time we have a lot of these conversations and, and make a lot of difference. Uh, a lot's gone on in the past year since I was here. Uh, some good, some maybe not so good, but uh, we went through uh, Hurricane Matthew. Uh, we went through the wildfires in the mountains. Uh, we had a state fair right in the middle of all of that, and, and it was not easy, I can tell you that. But I've never been prouder of a group of people than I was of our employees in the Department of Agriculture for all the things they did with the Forest Service responding first to eastern North Carolina and then turning right around and fighting wildfires in the mountains along with 43 other states that came in to help us. So. Uh, and with all the division that we read about in the press, uh, when I pulled up to the, the first day to the fire uh, at Chimney Rock, I've never pr been prouder to be a North Carolinian or prouder to be an American. Uh, there were 43 states up there fighting fire along with our people from North Carolina, uh, our rural fire departments, municipal fire departments, and it was an absolutely amazing effort. We never lost a house. We never lost a business and we never lost a life. And if you had seen it, you would know how amazing that really was. But uh, we did it and I'm proud of it. So we're moving on from that. Uh, General George Patton said one time, uh, the measure of success is how high you bounce after you hit the bottom. And I certainly hope last fall we hit the bottom and things are looking up and we're going to bounce really high. Uh, and come back from some of the disasters that we had here in North Carolina, and so far so good. Uh, I know there are areas of the state that are really dry, my farm being one of them. I think we've had a tenth in the past five weeks, but in some areas there are really, really good crops, and uh, so we're, we're going to be hopeful that this holds and hopeful we don't have another tropical storm or hurricane this fall to deal with. We in the department have got a lot, a lot of things going. Uh, 
it seems it never slows down and there's always a tornado uh, that we're dealing with and people tell me that I'm the tornado. Uh, <clears throat> I'm pretty driven to get things done and, and we've got so many projects going on it's almost amazing. The fairgrounds, we're uh, building another building at the fairgrounds and for the first time this year we're going to have craft beer and North Carolina wine on the fairgrounds for tasting. Uh, we've got a special place to do that so that we can control it. Uh, and do it like it needs to be done. Uh, DOT is putting a tunnel in, starting to put a tunnel in under Trinity Road uh, from Carter Finley Stadium so that uh, it reduces the pedestrian uh, traffic that we're gonna have there. And we're gonna have 66 acres of parking for the first time this year on the corner of Reedy Creek and Trinity and Reedy Creek and Edwards Mill. And we'll be running buses continuously in and out of the fairground so that we uh, reduce the congestion and have a place for people to park. And I think that's the key to expanding the state fair is people being able to get there conveniently. And so we're gonna make sure that that, that happens and not to leave the West out. Uh, at the Mountain State Fair, we've just completed a new parking lot up there. We're re uh, renovating uh, Magoo Arena, doing all kinds of work on those fairgrounds, so that will be fresh and new uh, by the time that we get to the Mountain State Fair. Uh, one thing that I'm really excited about, we now have over a thousand meat handlers in North Carolina that gives uh, producers the opportunity to move their product directly from the farm to the consumer. And we are in the process of planning a meat handler's building at the state farmer's market to accommodate people to be able to sell directly to the public. Uh, probably will be a couple years in completion by the time we get there and to accommodate additional traffic. We've got a, a new entrance coming in to the uh, state farmer's market that's com coming shortly. Uh, and, and probably really importantly, uh, they're proceeding with the Dix property and the, the park that will be developed there. And they have actually brought the Department of Agriculture into that discussion. And uh, I chair, I'm, I'm serving on one of the committees, but that partnership of all these people coming to this park and the Raleigh Farmers Market can be tremendous, especially for the people that sell product there. So we're working to develop uh, entrances from the park to the uh, farmer's market and, uh, and develop a partnership. And what I would like to see is they not have food and that kind of thing in the park. We want to be the place that furnishes all the amenities for the people that come to the park, which would be a tremendous boom for the farmer's market. The granddaddy of them all, though, is the $94 million lab that we are building uh, at the corner of Reedy Creek and Edwards Mill, right across from the 66 acres of parking. Uh, this is not an easy task. I thought the hard part was getting the legislature to appropriate the money and the bond to do this, but when you start into a project like this, something we've never done, it's hard. Uh, we've had over 100 people in the department having input in what this lab needs to look like because, you know, this is a lab that will be here probably 30 to 40 years into the future. Uh, the ones we have now are 40 years old. Uh, the population of North Carolina when this, uh, these labs were built was 5.6 million people. Uh, it's over 10 million now. And so we need this new lab. We need it to be done right. Uh, and it's going to service five of, our, five of our divisions that actually do have laboratories, and it's going to be co-located. Uh, and we're to the point that yesterday I started to pick out the exterior uh, materials for the building, so it, we hope to be uh, building this building in the sp next spring. Uh, probably going to take another three years to complete the building, but it's going to be something I think all the people in agriculture in North Carolina are really going to be proud of. So all of us have a lot to do. Uh, there's always going to be policy needs at the state and federal level. Uh, I know one of the major issues is immigration reform. Uh, we're beginning to see some bills uh, in the House in Washington that uh, begin to address some of those needs. And I know uh, President Duvall and Larry will have a, a lot of input uh, into how this thing goes. But we're hopeful that this will give some H-2A relief uh, and hopefully uh, figure out a way that we keep the people working on farms that have been working on farms and have been a, an asset to the ag community all of these years. So there's a lot to do. Uh, I look forward to the challenge 
And with your help, we're going to make sure that we meet this $100 billion uh, project that I have of being a uh, $100 billion economic impact by the year 2020. And one thing that I, I just thought that I didn't mention when I talked about uh, innovation, we're partnering with NC State University on a food manufacturing innovation center in Kannapolis. And this is something that we think no other state can touch. Uh, it's going to be about uh, drawing food manufacturing into North Carolina, and we're going to have some innovation uh, at the center that no other, that you know, no other state has. Uh, Larry and I visited uh, a similar center at uh, Cal Davis, and it, it wasn't what I think we need to to attract the industry to North Carolina. But you know, we at least we got a, a, a kind of a picture of what it might look like. So that's going to be coming online in the next year. Uh, is something that uh, I really think can transform uh, agribusiness in North Carolina. So uh, keep up abreast of what the, what's going on up there. And uh, if you get a chance, go by and take a look at that. The Kannapolis campus is a wonderful asset to North Carolina that's never been used, basically. So this is going to be an effort to take this asset and make it successful for agriculture and agribusiness in the state. So I'm excited about that one, too. Larry, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I don't like 103 degree weather. Uh, that stuff is not that hot because there's no humidity in it. Nah, nah, that's not true. 103 is hot. Do you want it in a sauna or do you want it in an oven? We were in the oven. Thank you for all the uh, things you do for North Carolina. Good luck with the crops and call us when you need us because I'm from the government and I'm here to help you. 